I am Nancy Naran and today I welcome you to another riveting episode of the Show Stoppers. Now today I have with me someone who has taken me down the memory lane. Preparing for the interview has been one of the most memorable experiences because it brought back floods of memories. I can't wait to introduce you with bated breath one of my favorite singer performers and music composers Mr Leslie Lewis. Welcome to the show sir. Namaste Nancy ji. Rock and roll. It's so nice to be on your show and yes, uh, yes. yeah I was kind of wondering how this is going to go. It's going to be fun. So I think it's I uh, had prepared a lot but the minute you logged in I forgot all my lines. It's cool. I think you know it's, it's just lovely to be on your show and I, I and it will be fun to chat whatever you things you got in your mind you can ask me I'm here. So uh, so very interestingly you started your journey with advertising and with jingles yeah. and you have created some of the most iconic jingles of all times i mean a uh, mango fruity fresh and juicy we still you know like it's there in our mind yeah do do pio glass well, these are these are uh, lines which are etched in everybody's mind from that generation and this they've, they've never faded so tell us about that first so that that is my second phase my first phase I, so i was in school in mount abu so i go a little further back if you don't mind and just okay. just to put things in a little perspective so my dad has been one of the biggest choreographers in bollywood so you might have seen shole sargam don kheke pan banana you know yahoo even in paris all done by my dad <clears throat> deva re deva ganpati deva so done by my dad so i am a inherently bollywood kid because my mom was a dancer my dad was a dancer you know the most famous choreographers of that time you know it was yeah, the- I, i would say i mean you know i used to laugh at him say you guys are running around the trees and kya karte ho what dance nonsense but you know sure i mean now when i look back he is another zone and um, <clears throat> so i went to boarding school in mount abu so i was not even in a b town i was in a c town of india and my school was in a jungle so i had bears panthers snakes fish oh, you know I, i lived in that my my school was i mean we had bears you till today i just somebody just sent me some videos of bears coming into school now right now oh. 21 so <clears throat> that's how my school has been <clears throat> and so i'm a wild guy in the jungle types so for me the city was never my space so when i came to bombay i i didn't know what to do i wanted to play guitar i wanted to and that's how i i i started playing in a in a band called uh, in a fisherman band you mahim in mahim there is a fisherman colony and they had an orchestra which they say in marathi is a orchestra and it is called blue diamond orchestra and i was in that and i used to play in sath party i used to play in umbargao in dharavi for the ganpati you know i'm playing on the street so that's how i started playing on the road on the street for the ap- absolute am janta so and i think you, i got to know, learn did, a lot there did you ever have any formal education in in music did you learn because uh, apparently the family background was all about dance not music yeah but my dad was always a, he was a tabla player i grew up with zakir bhai I, you know so allah rakha ji all like you know that was the classic classical dance and classical music went hand in hand so my dad is also coming from classical dance and you know so whether he's done kathak he's done bharatnatyam whatever they choreography is gone into the commercial zone but they all learned the classical stuff so whether it is gopi kishan whether it is you know biju maharaj was all that so I, i was a young kid zakir bhai used to carry me when i was small you know i was lesly mia oh so, yeah i mean that's how i was but somewhere when i when i got so i grew up with all that classical around me but i never wanted to learn it and i never wanted to study class i didn't want to study anything i just want to do my thing so i i think i'm pretty good at breaking rules so so that's why i didn't get into a formal yeah i've learned i mean I, i obviously had to read music if, because when i first started i started playing in studios and i played for a lot of movies and i used to play you know for lakshmikant pyarlal for uh kalyan janji for rd as a musician i played all those gigs but if you can't read you can't play stuff 
so you had to learn to read right stuff like that's how it was a requirement so i didn't try to dive deep into it i just basically did what was necessary to get the job done but for the nuances that gets you uh, to the point where you can form well so i was i became a guitar player a professional guitar player in the industry and I think I got pretty popular because I wanted to be the best. You know, there's no such thing as the best. But your head as a 16, 17 year old, you say. Uh, but my idea of best was if anybody calls me, I should be able to play rock, jazz, blues, guzzle, classical, whatever. I should be able to play that genre, and they shouldn't feel like it's too cool. I call somebody else. And I think I nailed it. At some point, I, I I figured that I'd kind of, and I was really, I think, quite in demand in my own space. And then I wanted to compose jingles because I was assisting Louis Banks. Uh, as his assistant, so I was assisting him, but never composing. He was always composing. I was arranging, producing all that stuff. But then I wanted to compose. So when I wanted to be a jingle composer, they said, "No, no, no. He is a very good guitarist. Jingle will be done. So you will call him to play the guitar. Call him to play the guitar. I don't think he can compose. He is not a composer. He is a guitarist. So I got put in a box of guitars. It took me a long time. I stopped playing guitar. 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 I stopped I got my first few jingles, and that's how my phase two as a jingle composer, from a guitar player, from a professional guitar player to a jingle composer, was a tough break where nobody would let you do anything. Till, of course, like you were saying, mango fruity, you know. Do was it a deliberate decision to stop playing the guitar so that you get uh, taken more seriously as a composer, and people sort of break that identity and give you? Because they just keep calling me to play the guitar, and I'd be stuck in that. I wouldn't be able to get that that opportunity to get out. So I kind of. Kind of rebuilt myself into another avatar, whatever it might be, and I got myself there. Then, you know, from there onwards, I think I've done practically every prime pack commercial. I've done most brands in this country, whatever. As I've been lucky, but I've been there doing all their, you know, music for so many brands. You know, whether it was Vimal or whether it was Thumbs Up or you, you name it. I mean, I've done practically um, every brand. But uh, then it became. Uh, so your question was about how did I start jingles? This is how I started jingles, and then from there I wanted to. But jingles were getting over in 15 seconds and 30 seconds. That's how I started. I said no, or a little bit, a little tune, a song, and and then I wanted to compose songs. And they said no, no. So I tried to uh, be a song composer. They said no, no. He's not a oh, jingle composer. Fantastic jingle composer. Then in another box, he. Yes, I don't think he can compose songs. Songs. He's a very good jingle composer. So guitar players say I can be a very good jingle composer, and nobody would give me any work. And then finally, when I cracked it with a pari hu me, and then Janan Sanjay Karo, and you know, of course, Yaro Dosti, Pal, all those songs happened. And then everyone said he's an amazing composer. And I'm saying, you know, all this while <laughs> struggling to to get your attention. And and you know, you know, when you were into these songs, Janan Sanjay Karo and Yaro, and you know, indie pop, so you lie hi aap ho. There was no indie pop before that. You sort yes. of introduced the whole trend into the country. Yeah, it became that because what became indie pop was the alternate music that I was doing, and you know, people like us were were doing that kind of stuff. I mean, to tomorrow you find you know when it became so big, indie pop became so huge that it actually started affecting Bollywood, and then. You know, the, the, all the all the girls were going, "Oh, Lucky Ali, so good, cool, he's so cute. I love his poster." And now, one Sardar is going, "Tunak, tunak, tun, tunak, tunak," and everyone's dancing in the clubs, "Tunak, tunak, tun, tunak, tunak." You know, even hey. then, I'm just saying. <laughs> and 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 two uncles saying, "Sorry, the Bama girl," and everybody's saying, "Wow, so cool." And grandmother saying, "Jai Nand," saying, "Jai Karo," and everybody saying, "Wow." And then they kind of move all that back into Bollywood. So. Uh, The, the entire indie pop scene. You see, what is who who's there in Bollywood? Look at Vishal Shekhar. They're all guys who have come from from a different sound, and who you know have brought in newer sounds into Bollywood. But they were all in the alternate space. So all of us, when we did this music, it was just me trying to do my own thing. In '86, when I was doing all this kind of stuff, it just became like you're too alternate. So I had to. Straight jacket myself and look, make it candy pop, make it really sweet, because Indians love sweet music. So, you know, just like jalebis and gulab jamun. You know, like we are we are sweet people. We love sweet stuff. So even with music, they don't like rock. 
per se. It's not. That's why you find heavy metal and, and your death metal and still doesn't work much. It's a very small crowd. Most Am Janta will. Abhi because of movies like Rock On and Thoda Sa Thay Na Na Karke, it chalta hai, but to a point. So basically, that's a select audience. That's not yeah. the masses. Yeah. So the masses still don't like that, you know, bitter food. They they want this sweet. Food. You know, so in that I had to really sweeten up. So a pari who me, a janam samjha karo. You know, janam samjha karo, raja bhumi, hum chal. La la la. You know, it just became sweet. But I had to do that because otherwise. I don't think anybody was getting what I was doing, and that became a deal. So, were you? And it got tremendous success. So, then, did you ever feel that you had to compromise, or you had to, uh, you know, you couldn't solo, uh, sort of follow your heart uh, to the T? No. A lot. Yeah. I couldn't follow my heart the way I wanted to, but I knew that at the end of the day, because I came from advertising, I understood very clearly that if I do some work for somebody, I got to make sure that it works for that somebody. So the record label has got to work for them. It's got to work for the artist. You know, every song I, I've always done, my whole concept is always been people's got to say, "Hey, who's the singer?" Because hey, Kone, a good voice. I love. I don't need them to say, "Hey, what a great song and what a." Oh, second, second level thing. But on the first level, I want them to. So I would need to create a star of that singer and the best thing that the singer is about. The best things about your voice, the best style that the singer has. I need to bring that out. So I think I, I focused on that a lot. But I had to then compromise a lot of what I would like to do at that point. But I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I had to. Yeah. So of course, With, you know. Today, you you know. So from that, so jingle composer. No, as a guitar player, one jingle composer, two. I became a pop music producer. There was three, and then as a band, Colonial Cousins. Uh, you, you know, so that was my fourth fourth up there as a band, as Colonial Cousins. We were a band. We are not uh, Hari Aran and Leslie Rose. I mean, वो तो है, वो तो पहले से ही है. Hari Aran was always Hari Aran. Always and, independent. Uh, yeah, Leslie Rose was always Leslie. But together we became the Colonial Cousins. तो वो बैंड का जो सीन था ना एट दैट पॉइंट देर वर्ल्ड बैंड अराउंड द कंट्री देर वर नॉट प्लेंग मोर इंग्लिश काइंड ऑफ बैंड वो प्लेंग बट इन हिंदी हिंदी बैंड कॉन्सेप्ट वाज नेवर एन इंडियन कॉन्सेप्ट या एंड इट वाज रियली वेरी पॉपुलर इट वाज ऑर्केस्ट्रा बेस्ड इंडियन बैंड मींस ऑर्केस्ट्रा लता जी गाएंगे अलका जी गाएंगे पीछे पूरा ऑर्केस्ट्रा 40 गाइस विल बी यू नो टुडे इट इज ब्रिंगिंग द वायलेंस एंड सिंफनी चाहिए वो बट अदरवाइज इफ देयर वाज बेसिकली अ कोंगा तुम्बा ढोलक गिटार बेस की वो यू नो दैट काइंड ऑफ एंड एंड सर विद द बैंड एंड विद द बैंड विथ इंक्रीजिंग बिकॉज़ यू नो व्हेन यू हैव टू मेक एन इंप्रेशन इन 15 सेकंड्स देन यू गेट दैट यू इट इंक्रीजेस टू अ 1 मिनट सॉन्ग देन अ 3 मिनट हाउ डस द हाउ डू द डायनामिक्स चेंज with the platforms with the you know for, with the audiences how did you manage to move in and out of different roles because i wanted to be that's it i just wanted to be that i wanted to be a guitar player i became i wanted to be a jingle composer i became i wanted to be a pop singer so when i wanted to be a band i told hari i said look if you are going to do this music let's go live and let's play live as a band and that is what triggered colonial cuz it wasn't the what great music and all. yeah yeah we love the music there's no doubt about it but the concept was let's take it live and let's perform it live so so was it another deliberate effort to break the mold and bring this whole band concept in the country because you've always been a rule breaker as you said so as a band the only reason the band thing came up is because hari said I I initially had the option I thought I'll I'll get Hari to sing the Hindi parts and the Indian parts and I'd get somebody else some other singer to sing the English whatever whatever and I would I was always composer producer right so I said I'll put this the concept and we we'll put it together so he said I don't want to sing with anybody else if you're singing it's okay wow so oh if you want me to sing then why don't we form a band then it's my band then I'll sing whatever way I I can in my band it's not about you know a, a project and so colonial cousins became a band with because we were excited about the music that we were doing we were not trying to show off to anybody we were just like thrilled you know between ourselves saying bro because uh, you know i remember telling hari at that point i said you know abhi to bahut bands aane wale like this and we got to have a lot of competition i'll tell you it's 2021 i can't see another colonial cousins around nor can we <laughs> trust and there's so many people who've tried to do it not understanding the core reason why colonial cousins sounds different 
So there are two things. The core reason. There why are, it does. There are two reasons. Being that we are not a fusion band. We are a pop band. We do pop and jam and what are they? Same way, jam and some in the same way. Sunny the pop jam and the sir. But actually, it's a pop song. It's not not fusion. So we are not actually just because we integrate Indian classical into our music. It's about our songs. So we are a pop band actually. And a lot of people have been thinking it's a fusion band. So they've been doing all these alaps and rags and this thing. And I'm saying that's not what we are about. We are about songs. So fundamentally, what a thin line, you know. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm saying we. Many people haven't realized it's our songs that are are the strengths. But yes, can Haryana sing classical and we can do all the stuff that we do? Yeah, we do because that's how we are. So that's our sound. And number two, and that's the reason I realized why nobody can be like us is because the music of Colonial Cousins is the life of Haryana and the genius. So, sir, you mentioned that there came a time when the whole indie pop scene slowly started again uh, fading, and you know, Bollywood again took the reins. So, how? was that transition again so what was happening was like i said you know there's a lucky ali and all the girls are going there's a sardar dancing there and everyone's dancing to his songs in the clubs there's all this alternate to bollywood music happening and mtv and channel v just became very strong with this alternate music to for the, for the youth and that's i think somehow bollywood didn't see it coming so they kind of lost a lot of the gloss what bollywood always has so what they did if i remember right is they came back with some serious television play of item numbers and they grabbed that space and all the young kids got attracted to this you know little sex sex overdrive item you know skin and whatever it was And they just, and, and, yeah, so they just got that youth back in from by doing. If you remember, there was in the nineties, there was a whole section of just item numbers, item numbers, like everything was item numbers. A lot of cheap gimmickry, actually. It yeah, was. but but whatever, it captured the younger youth and just pulled them back uh, into the Bollywood space. And I mean, I'm not against Bollywood by any chance. I'm just saying they they felt that they had, Bollywood felt it, it kind of slipped its own magic somewhere. It had gone off, and, and it had. and they needed to get them get their audience back and i think that's how they did it and then of course it it became very good again which it is now uh, you know all powerful kind of space so for me well i'm now in my fifth sabta so guitar player jingle composer pop music producer band and now singer perform and that I've started, and because of exactly what you said, things are coming and going. I said, like, then let me not get into the system. So I have not signed with any art, any record label. I have not signed with any artist man. Nothing. I'm saying because you can't understand me. I am not good at managing myself. I'm not a record label. I need a record label. I need a management, but I need somebody who understands what I'm doing. And right now, when you look at me, you talk alone in cousins. I'm saying, no, it's 90s. Ki baat ab mat karo ya. It's 2021. What are we going to be doing from for the next 10 years? Well, Hindi is another new genre. Tell us, tell us about that. So, so I, I call it global Hindi, and it's exactly what you asked me. You know, did you feel that you had to compromise in the 90s? Yes, and that compromise I don't need to do now because this generation, because of internet, is so open. They have understood, and they're so uh, more exposed mm. than the 90s. And now, if I did a bossa nova, they get it, and they love it. Like the song I did for you, that was a 1986 composition. It's an 82 composition, but I did it in Hindi in 86. So, so my point is, today I can do it. So now I know that I can do, uh, but uh, you know, all this new material, which, but it's not so new that it's so you know, कुछ अलग अटके all the time. Every गाना can't be अलग अटके. But I, my point is, आपको अच्छा लगा या नहीं? and my part, i have a simple thing that if you liked it great listen to it if you don't like it drop it next month there'll be another you know and it's free who's asking you to listen go listen to the whatever songs you like no i'm just putting out music that i believe in that i'm creating i'm making the videos i'm whatever, whatever it is i'm a single independent from the composition to the lyrics to the singing to the recording to the mixing to the mastering to the shooting to the editing to the final upload is me so that's how independent i am right now because nobody gets me 
in a while so already i finished one year of, of, of and i have had some great uh, you know great response i i i put chhoda tune out in in june it got it got playlist on spotify brazil in a rock wow uh, i'm saying hello this is hindi <laughs> it's blues the chhoda tune kaise mujhe is hal mein tu 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 छोड़ा तूने कैसे मुझे इस हाल में ओ ये दिल कह रहा है गया तेरी जान में या बट इट्स ब्लूज अरे इट्स इन हिंदी बट माई पॉइंट इज इवन इन इंडिया जियो सावन पुट इट ऑन द एडिटर्स टॉप फिफ्टीन पिक आई ट्यून्स इंडिया ऑल जॉन का India all genre, top 200. It's 59. I say hello. I don't have a record label. I don't have nobody pushing it for me. I'm just. I'm not even announcing that tomorrow there is a song coming. No, I just put it out. And 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 that's been great, uh, you know. And then, like I said, singer performer. I got a call from Hollywood to sing in a Hollywood film. So I've just sung in a film in Hollywood as a singer, not as the composer, not as a producer, nothing. They, so, so I'm so there's Omar Gooding who's rapping and I'm singing. It's a movie uh, called Trap City, and they just called me out of the blue and they said we check you out and we we think that you, it would be great if you can sing the song. And Omar is the rapper. So there's a in the '90s, '80s, '90s, a very big actor called uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh, in a lot of Hollywood films, and it's his brother. Uh, who is the rapper and ATG he is the producer in Kaiba films so they just called me up and they they said we love you to sing and i said sing a performer it's happening i didn't this one say so there's a universe that's that's taking me uh, so the video is out it, it's got a, it got a million views in 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 a day in 24 hours it, it, it hit 1 million views wow and, and the video is out you can go online check entourage that's the name of the song and i'm in it and you know <laughs> i'm in hollywood singing as a singer that's what i said talk about music having no boundaries sans frontiers it's exactly so i'm i'm just saying so the singer performer is now people are getting to see uh, a lot more and hear a lot more that's because i'm doing it myself that's the only way i can take it and bring it to you on my channel on my youtube channel so i keep telling my friends that please share please like because that's the only way i can grow it there is no record label there's no manager nobody's going to promote it there's no promotion Yeah. One awards you've won the Billboard awards you've you know you've got the MTV awards and you were uh, you brought the whole uh, you know Coke Studio concept to India I mean uh, yeah. and look what a rage it became even with like uh, all of the colleges every college had a band you were all doing fusion with dholak and tabla and guitar and flute and you know drums and whatever so so from my perspective exactly like you said in the nineties what I was doing became indie pop. Mm, yes i'm thinking what i'm doing now in the 2021s hopefully will be the next indie pop version of this genre this generation so i have also i have, so i have a, an artist called kavya jones who i produced her album just like i did a parium at that time or jam as it is not just about me i'm doing my own songs but i'm also producing young artists so she's one artist who i've produced this and there are a couple of them another young artist so i'm just producing some other artists but yes i have to spend a lot of time trying to promote the singer called leslie rose because nobody knows her so thoda focus us pe hai to all my songs are coming but at the same time i'm i've not i've not stopped doing what i was doing in the 90s so just like that i promoted a kavya jones and her aaja meri baahon mein the track is done fabulously she did a song uh, an ep and on that ep was song called beh gayi main it went straight to number 1 on bing but we didn't promote that song our song was aaja aaja meri baahon mein the other song in the ep is gone to number 1 <laughs> so so it's exciting to know that people are listening yes and it also gives you such a hands on thing about what people are liking what they're not you know when you're making it you're making it with an entire different concept in your head right. uh, and when it's received by people that's when you get to know that this is what is working or not exactly how are you enjoying this phase of your life so what is next for leslie lewis and and it amazes me like i've just come back from the gym today and there's a young guy at the gym who i mean he works there but he's, he's a younger generation so sir i love your new song Song, which one? 
So that I come up with it every month. Say, yeah, so Bill Terry did on that, you know, Gazelta. I said, wow. So the guys are actually listening. And he came up to me to, to say it to me. So wow. he knew the song. So it's, so that's what I mean. So so it's exciting to know that without promotion, without anything, it's just the music is talking. And I just need, you know, I call people like you, like my angels. Because only you will promote it. You will talk about it. You might share something. That's all. I just want you to hit the share button. It's free. Don't Don't pay for it. But... But just spread it because that's the only way the music. Because the music needs to talk to me. I can't. I can't. Tell everybody, I notice when they're singing a new song, you know, this song is about this, and it says that. I just press play now and shut up, <laughs> and let the people get it. But because the compositions very often are not that strong for them to get it on that first listen, they need to explain the song. And I'm saying, don't explain. Music doesn't need to be explained in English. Just press play, and all languages will get it. Uh, i this conversation could go on and on <laughs> but we're short on time and this episode cannot be wrapped up without you singing one of the most iconic songs i don't even have to say it and it's my personal favorite so if you could you know just hum a few lines of sari tha this is your okay thank you Something about the way you smile, but you may never know the reason why. Sunny the bubble gum bubble is on. Something about the way you smile, but you may never know the reason why. Sunny the bubble gum bubble is on. Oh, John, the guy who made her guess it must be young. The guy who made her judge who can't stop the bar. Now look at me. सानी <laughs> Really, again, it it this song and your voice has it's timeless. It is like again, I'd say I've gone back in time. It has been such a wonderful experience. A uh, words fall short. Really, I am truly humbled. I never thought that we'd get the opportunity to have you, uh, if not in person, then right across. So thank you so much for being on the show. I'm really happy that you guys are promoting this because this is the only way I can promote my new music. Purana music, so everybody's already heard it and they all know about it. So what's going to happen? So I think that's the only way I can I can do it is to be available and say, hey, look, this is the one music. Absolutely, sir. As I said, your music cuts across ages, boundaries, and different tastes. You're making out something for every taste, and it's coming out very frequently. So then, you know, people are going to wait for the next one. So I wish you all the best in all your future endeavors, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So hi and thank you very much for having me on the Professional Times. Thank you Shitesh. Thank you Nancy. I think I've had a over talkative time, but it's one of those days where I've really had fun. And uh, thank you very much. Keep spreading the good work that you guys are doing and rocking the world. Thank you.